scores a goal. Can you believe it? It's extraordinary. The it's yes, on the this run. was the yeah. win Adelaide needed last Fair night. Point. The only top eight side they'd beaten was Port Adelaide coming to this game. So to knock off GWS, who were second, was a significant victory for them. And it gives them a great chance to push towards the eight. They've got Richmond, who are wounded next Thursday night at Adelaide Oval. Ooh, and the big moment in the last Tex. quarter, that one from Walker, I just thought Sloan was magnificent. Greenwood only found out he was playing about half an hour before the game when Tom Lynch withdrew, but that man Sloan had a hamstring issue. They weren't sure whether he was going to play and he was instrumental after being tagged. And how many times have we seen this, but Eddie Betts. So for Adelaide, they were plus 90 clearances last quarter, plus 11 in contested footy. And their big leaders came to play and that got them the result, which should set up their season from here. Spot on Kane, we've got to have a look at it again. Mm. Come on, show us Eddie again. <laughs> how good was this? This is Eddie, taps it back in, gets it. And he can't kick that. He can't do it. That is magnificent, Edward. Uh, Bill J Jenkins had his hands up <laughs> before the kick had even been made because he knew <laughs> what Betts was going to do. What yeah. a freakish player he's been. And I just think we've got a. I was really critical of Adelaide's selection on Thursday night. Well, yeah. Why Bryce Gibbs wasn't yeah. in this yeah. team, and perhaps Greenwood as well. So it's been hard. And the other one as well was Sam Jacobs. So he went with Riley O'Brien. I thought that was Riley O'Brien's best game. So. You probably got to say, well, Adelaide were justified in all of the selections they made because they got the results. This potentially yeah. turns their season right around. Absolutely. They've now got mm. Richmond, a vulnerable Richmond, mm. next weekend, next I think Friday. They turned their season around a few weeks ago. I think they've been going okay for a few weeks well, now. Well, they nearly lost to mm. Melbourne, who had won three on the last kick of the game last week. So, not sure they've been going Rory that Rory well. was yeah. great, but he's got to work on something. Good research. He's got to work on this. <laughs> Uh, now, what else, Look, uh, oh, what else did you say? What's oh, going on there, Billy? Well, he tried to, he's got to work on his spitting. Fair income. That's not good enough, Rory. Yeah. If you're going to do it, do it softly. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching the Sunday Footy Show wherever you might be. We hope you're having a very relaxing Sunday. And I'm sure our next guest is in a way because, I mean, it does relax the mind when you have a win, Kane. No doubt. Let's have a look at the game last night in Adelaide. It was the Crows. This was the scout that they needed. And the coach put that on the agenda this week. The biggest game for the year. The Crouch boys always get plenty of it. Jenkins started really well, kicked three. And then Taylor Walker and Roy Sloan, enormous in the last quarter. For the Giants, Taranto sensational, as was Kelly. But... Joining us live from the beautiful Summoner Park in Adelaide is the Crows coach, Don Pike. Don, congratulations. You said during the week this was the scout that you needed and your boys were good enough to get it done. Yeah, it was a big game last night for us. Obviously, GWS uh, been in great form and um, playing really good footy. And for us, you know, we needed to take a step and, and get a scalp, as you said. And uh, to our guys' credit, we uh, endured a little bit of a, a flat patch in the third quarter, but uh, responded really well and came home strong and um, got the points. Well, Don, let's take a look at some of the highlights last night. The Crows started brilliantly well. They had the ball in their control, repeat entries inside 50. I thought you, the way you set up defensively didn't allow the Giants to get that dangerous ball movement that they've been so famous for. Yeah, look, we were really mindful of that. We sort of felt like, you know, that we understood how they wanted to play. And early on, we probably didn't make the most of our opportunities. Um, felt like we were... You know, we had, we, had, we had dominant field position. I think we had seven and inside 50s in the first quarter, but uh, two goals, five, probably didn't give us the value for that. So uh, probably need to just improve a bit of our forward efficiency. I want to uh, pay a tribute to Rory Sloan because he wasn't sure whether he was going to play. In fact, I couldn't believe uh, that he played on the back of a hamstring strain. Not only did he play, I thought he was the match winner late. Uh, how difficult was that call to risk your co-captain last night? Yeah, look, it was, uh, it was an interesting one because obviously he didn't complete the game against Melbourne, but... Um, you know, our medicos were really confident that where he had sustained that hamstring injury was probably less uh, risk in terms of playing. Uh, it was more of a stretch mechanism, so they were really confident here to run on uh, on Friday, and um, we made the call to go with him. And you know, the, as you say, to his credit, he was uh, he was solid all night. And then I thought in the last quarter, him and Tex and our other leaders really stood up and, uh, and got us over the line. You yeah, talk about Tex. He's been under pressure for a fair amount of year. There's been a lot of articles written about him, Don, but I thought 15 minutes in that last quarter, particularly when he put you in front, it was a really nice purple patch of footy for the Texan. Yeah, look, I thought he competed well all night, to be honest, and it was one of those, yeah, you know, it's a ball, but it's just sometimes you just got to keep coming at the ball, keep coming at the ball, and, um, you know, then in the, in the last quarter, he was able to really put his, his stamp on the game, and, you know, that's, that's what you want out of your leaders, and, you know, it was outstanding to see, and I was just super happy for him last night, given, you know, some of the criticism he's copped, he was able to, to influence the game as we know he can. You challenged him last week at halftime of the Melbourne game. Um, is it difficult to challenge a leader like Tex? He, he did respond last week and then again this week. Well, it wasn't really a challenge. It was more a conversation of how you're going, mate. I mean, he's, you know, it's easy in those days to, you know, sort of think, oh, the leaders will just find a way and get it done. So it's just more a conversation with him last week about, right, how you going? You've got a half to go here. There's things you can do to help us here. And, you know, last week he responded, and I thought, again, 
last night he had an influence on the game, which is great. I just want to talk about the Crouch brothers there, Don. Uh, 65 disposal again uh, last night, and their consistency has been sensational for a long period of time, or despite Brad's injuries over the period. But I suppose, is that where you're trying to get your midfield mix right with some of your tough selections of late? Yeah, that's exactly right. And obviously it was great to get Matt back this week. I mean, he's all Australian player. He's, he's an outstanding player for us. He'd missed the previous three. So getting him back in the team was important. And he, he combines really well with his brother. And, and Brad's starting to hit the scoreboard as well for us now, which is important for our mids to be you know, hitting the board as well. So, you know, great to have both those guys firing well last night for you us. You copped a lot of criticism on Thursday when you released your team. So no Greenwood at the time. Gibbs was out as well. Um, you're justified in those selections now. But... Bryce, I mean, it's a big talking point. You gave up, I think, pick 10 and 16, and you got a pick back for him. And he's playing in the sample and has done this year. Has it been difficult to manage that expectation this year? A uh, little bit. I mean, look, the, the issue is interesting on that Thursday night. It was, you know, we bring back Matt Crouch, we bring back Richard Douglas, and we bring back Cole Hardigan, and uh, all the media is about who's out of the team. So, look, where Bryce is at at the moment, he's really clear. Um, we know he's going to be a good player for us. He's just got a couple of things he needs to sort out. We're working through that with him in terms of his, his uh, the way he's playing. Um, but, you know, I'm confident, you know, in the next three or four weeks he'll sort that out. He'll be back in the team and um, we'll get a player that we know can help us win big games. And that's, that's really what he wants to be part of and that's what we want him to do. And you're going to have one huge selection headache this week. Sam Jacobs was good in the SANFL, but Riley O'Brien's form just continues to get better. Yeah, look, he was outstanding last night, Riley. I thought he was really significant in the last quarter. I mean, I think he ended up with five or six centre clearances and his ruck work into his follow-up was really good. So, yeah, you know, he keeps growing game on game. And, you know, Sam came back and he's played a couple of good games at Sample. So, you know, decisions are always going to be difficult uh, selection. But that's uh, the beauty of having fit list and having experienced players who, are, who we know are capable of playing the level. I thought it was a really even performance last night from Adelaide as we look at the votes. That man there is in the votes, Riley O'Brien. He had four clearances in the last quarter, 17 disposals, 29 hit outs. So he's there. Yeah, but I thought the Giants actually probably had three out of their four players. Very even from the Crows. Their best players stood up late, but across four quarters, that's the way I saw it. All right, Don, thanks very ah. much for your time. It's a pretty short turnaround for you, isn't it? You've got uh, Richmond on Thursday night. Yeah, Richmond come out. The challenges keep coming. We've got uh, Richmond Thursday night and then uh, then we head into a bye. But an important game. You know, last week was important. This week's equally is important. You know, we want to go into that bye eight and five and really give ourselves a, a good crack at the last half of the season. Absolutely. All right. All the best for the rest of the season. Don Pike joining us live there from the City of Churches.